The federal government is staying tight-lipped on proposed changes to Canada's employment insurance program. Reports suggest repeat EI applicants could be required to accept lower-paying jobs and the government could ramp up enforcement measures to ensure recipients play by the rules. Will changes to EI help address labour shortages in some parts of the country or will the, uh, they unfairly punish seasonal workers and other out-of-work Canadians? And joining me now is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Human Resources and Skills Development, Kelly Leach, NDP MP Malcolm Allen, and the Liberal Human Resources critic, Roger Kuzner. Good to see you all there in the foyer. Um, Great to see you, Rosie. Let me start with uh, an interview that Evan Solomon uh, just did uh, for CBC Radio's The House with Minister Finley today. And he asked her quite point blankly if a report in the Globe and Mail that says that people who repeatedly apply uh, for EI will be penalized and could be forced to take lower paying jobs was accurate. I want our viewers to have a chance to hear that exchange and then we'll get into it. Here she is. I just want to get a confirmation. That report that would include repeat users of the program required to accept lower paying jobs than Canadians using EI for the first time. Is that report wrong? Well, what I'm saying is that those details have not been released. We haven't dis- ex- explained what they will be. We'll be doing that soon. So that's uh, not a denial. That's how I read that, Kelly Leach. It, when will we see those changes? And and can you say, tell any more about what they'll be like? These are people that would repeatedly use uh, employment insurance and so may be penalized for that. Is that accurate? And, and when could we see them? Well, as the minister mentioned, the regulations are being looked at now and the details will be released very soon. We're moving forward on changes to employment insurance to make sure that it's fair and equitable across the country, but also to make sure that we deal with this unprecedented skills shortage in the country. You know, employers and employees want to make sure that they have opportunities to fill the jobs available for Canadians. We're asking individuals to look at the jobs in their local area, Mm -hmm. in the qualified areas that they're qualified for, so that they can be employed. Um, But if you penalize people that have to tap into employment insurance on a regular basis, more than once, wouldn't that unfairly uh, disadvantage regions of the country, like the East Coast, where there is such a reliance on seasonal workers? Well, you know, Rosie, I'm not going to speculate on something that the Globe and Mail may have printed. As but your minister, minister, as your minister, minister didn't deny uh, that report, Rosie, though. Rosie, let your, me finish. Your, your minister Rosie, did, Kelly let, Leach, your minister didn't deny that report. Rosie, as the minister stated, the issues with regards to the regulations will be coming forward soon. So I'm not going to speculate on what the Globe and Mail said. The minister stated that the regulations will be coming forward soon. And the full intention of these regulations and what we're doing with EI is to make sure that it's fair and that Canadians have an opportunity to work across the country that it, match their local skills with what's available for them locally. Is that on the so, table, though, people who are repeat users of employment insurance to be cut off and penalized? Is that on the table? EI is not about penalizing people. EI is about having an insurance program to make sure that Canadian workers and employers are protected. Employment insurance will continue in that manner. Malcolm Allen, uh, in spite of what Kelly Leach says, the minister didn't deny these reports. So what are your concerns that this may be the direction the government is heading in? Well, it's clear this government's headed down a road that's going to penalize workers who, for no fault of their own, become unemployed. You know, in this country, if you quit a job, you you don't qualify for unemployment insurance. The only reason you qualify in the first place is because you've been uh, thrown out of work by an employer for whatever reason that happens to be, whether it be seasonal employment, contract employment, uh, whether it be a downturn in a particular industry, for instance. And now what they're going to do is be further punished uh, by by saying to them, you know what, uh, as this moves along, you'll have to job match and get uh, accept a leave in lower ways than you had the last time. So what we're going to end up doing with seasonal employment and those people who actually work in those areas is they're going to face with a real dilemma, lower their living standards or move. This is a way of simply saying to them, this government started out with saying, well, you know what, you should move to get jobs. So you should move out of the East Coast and go to the West Coast or from the South to the North, you know, dislocate your entire family, disrupt your family, perhaps even split your family by moving across this country to get work. So now they said, whoops, that didn't work. Well, we'll do it this way. We won't tell you you have to go. We'll just bleed you into poverty by making sure you have to work for less all the time. Okay. And eventually you'll end up packing up and leaving. Okay. Roger Kuzner, this, I think, would have a particular impact if if confirmed, if this does happen, would have a particular impact on the people in, in your region, because I know you've talked a lot about seasonal workers, and if they have to tap into employment insurance on a regular basis, I, I, I guess they might potentially be penalized. 
Uh, Rose, even more seasonal industries, more so than, than seasonal workers, because many of the, these workers work in a couple of different industries. Some move from tourism to the, mm -hmm. to the fishery, to the forestry, and, uh, and, and uh, do other things to knit together a living in, in rural communities across the country. But uh, you know, the, the conservative approach is similar to their approach on, on crime. Uh, you know, rather than trying to get at the, uh, the, the grass, the, the, the root, the cause of, of crime and look at addiction, abuse and, and look at uh, some of the factors that motivate uh, criminals, um, you know, just lock them up longer and, and uh, incarcerate more. Um, you know, in this case here, they're treating uh, people that work in seasonal industries, they're treating them like repeat offenders. and. Uh, uh, I think it's going to have a devastating effect. On, I, I've, I've had an opportunity to speak with a number of business people and, uh, that, that have uh, very successful enterprises mm -hmm. and contribute to the economy in Atlantic Canada and, and in northern Ontario. Don't, don't forget either, Rose, that you know, if you're looking at unemployed people, there are more people unemployed in Alberta than there are in the maritime provinces, and, and, and that's a fact. So, but, but shaking down chambermaids that have been in the tourism industry for, you know, how many years or, or uh, you know, people that work in crab plants and older workers, I don't think that that, okay. uh, I don't think that, that does anything to help the economy. Let's, let's let Kelly communities. Leach respond to that and perhaps particularly to the point of, of calling people who tap into employment insurance repeat offenders. Well, uh, let me just say this, Rosemary, is that we want to make sure that every Canadian that wants a job has the opportunity to have a job. We want to make sure that employers have the employees they need in order to grow their businesses and grow the economy in this country. Making sure that employment insurance is fair is something that's very important to that. But, you know, in my riding in Simcoe Gray, it's a, it's a rural riding. We have a lot of seasonal workers that work in apple orchards. They work in the tourism industry. We have one of the largest ski resorts in Ontario, if not the largest, in my riding. My employer said, are saying to me, we want to make sure we have Canadians first working for us. And we're trying to provide the opportunity for them to do that. So it's one thing to fear monger and to continue to divide <laughs> Western Canadians and Eastern Canadians, just like the NDP leader has been doing throughout this entire week. Okay. We just want Canadians to have an opportunity to work. Okay, Mal Malcolm Allen, what about that point about Canadians who maybe are turning down jobs that they, that they shouldn't be and, and should be trying to take employment um, because it's out there, as Kelly Leach is suggesting, for instance, picking fruit instead of leaving it to people, uh, migrant workers or people who come in from another country. The law, as it, uh, as it applies to the unemployed, is very clear at the moment uh, to Rosie. It says that you have to be available and uh, looking for suitable employment. Mm -hmm. And so as it stands now, if you turn down a suitable job, the commission can actually you know, stop your unemployment benefits if you decide to do that. So clearly you cannot, you know, this idea that somehow you sit at home and collect your check is absolute nonsense. When you're unemployed, you have an obligation, and every two weeks you actually attest to that obligation when you fill out your report cards, whether you're doing it online or whether you're still doing so, it as a card. So your, your, you your point that. is you think that there are enough things already there to protect, uh, to protect the employment insurance program and to make sure people are getting jobs? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, no, actually there isn't, because here's, here's the missing piece of all of this. The government talks about they're going to help the unemployed job match. They gave up job uh, locators and employment counselors nearly 20 years ago. They actually gave up doing that. They don't have anybody do that anymore. So I don't know how they think they're going to job match the unemployed to the employers out there when indeed they don't have okay. the capacity anymore to do that. Okay, Roger Kusner, Roger Kusner, and then Kelly Leach. I'll let you wrap it up. Go ahead. Uh, Thanks just for just the, the, the fact that Kelly's rural riding, uh, you know, there's a five percent unemployment rate there, and the annual household income is about ninety thousand dollars a year. Uh, a little bit different than Labrador or Southwest Nova. Uh, you know, they haven't, in, they haven't done anything in this last budget to uh, help young people train for future jobs, for uh, current, the, the 1.4 million current unemployed Canadians train for the, the jobs right now. Uh, again, I think this is an attack on seasonal industries, on contract workers, and it's going to devastate. When, when you start losing those people from communities, uh, you know, we're, we're going to lose teachers, we're going to lose doctors, we're going to lose nurses. Those people leave the communities and, uh, uh, you know, elk migration is a concern in rural Canada yeah. as it is, and this is just going to help augment that. And, and, and Kelly Leaf, do you want to respond to that point about how it, it could actually force people out of areas and into other areas where there are more jobs, and, and how would you deal with that as a government? Well, you know, Rosie, I, I sort of take issue with Roger demeaning the people that are working so hard in my riding. I have a lot of seasonal workers, and they work very hard. I'm just saying it's 
not, a, hey, it's not the same uh, profile the as people. The government has been okay. very clear in the budget. We provided $21 million over two years for job search and making sure that individuals are connected, and over $1.9 billion a year in labor market agreements to make sure individuals are trained for the jobs they want and the ones they want in this economy. The government's been clear. We have a jobs plan. We're moving forward with that, okay. and we're hopeful the opposition will support uh, it. One last question for me, Kelly Leach. Would it not be better at this point for the government to hurry up and put these details out there so that people know what's going to happen and can prepare or adjust for it? Well, as Rosie, as I said before, the ministry has been clear and they will be coming forward soon. I'm, I was glad to hear that uh, things have been moving up. I was men it had been mentioned to me before that it might be a few months now. It will be within weeks, if not sooner. Okay. So uh, those details will be coming forward soon. Okay, we look forward to seeing them. Thank you all very Thanks much. Thanks very much, enjoy, Rosie. enjoy the week in your riding.